It humbles the once mighty, hobbles governments, and sells boatloads of newspapers. In one sense, Scandal takes what is whispered in the darkness and shouts it in the light. Yes, I have some more to crack, okay. But is the public's appetite for Scandal becoming a gluttony? Meet a trio with first-hand perspective on the fishbowl of public life. Former Liberal Party leader, author, and scholar Michael Gnachev, Bill Blakey, who served 29 years in the Commons, and theological scholar and Toronto councillor Joe Mahevic, who had a front-row view of the mayoralty of Rob Ford. This is Context, a look at life beyond the headlines. So how do the shockwaves of successive scandals affect our political and civic health? Two men richly qualified to speak to that are author, scholar, and former Liberal Party leader Michael Ignatieff and Toronto City Councillor Joe Mahevic. Welcome to Context. Great to have you there. Joe, you have been at ground zero with all of what has gone on with Mayor Rob Ford. What has been the practical impact on what could have gotten done at City Council? Well, I, I view this moment at uh, City Council in a Charles Dick Dickensian kind of way, um, that, uh, that phrase, it's the best of times and the worst of times. <laughs> Certainly, it is the worst of times. Uh, no one likes the scandal of uh, being in the international media, uh, being made fun of, not just the mayor, but even the city and, frankly, the country on international talk shows and, uh, and uh, comedy shows. Um, no one likes the fact that we are perhaps at risk in terms of investment, in terms of uh, people coming here as tourists, people feeling that the brand, the City of Toronto brand as Correct. Toronto the good might be, might be changed. Uh, so, yes, it is a difficult uh, moment for, for us as a, as a city, and these kinds of scandals do bring that. But it is important to note, too, that the scandal is an opportunity for us, has been an opportunity for us to talk as Torontonians. What the scandal has done is also filled the coffee shops and the dinner tables with rich conversation, not just about what has happened on that particular day, but about the kind of city that we want, the ah. values that we want to inform city building over the next uh, while. And that, I think, has brought us also together, not just as council, which has also happened, left, right, center, uptown, downtown, but also as people to talk about the city we love and the kind of city we want to build. Michael, would you agree with that? You listen to the city, you live in the city. Has it been, is there a best of time silver lining coming through? Well, I, I think the thing that Joe's pointing out is that the scandal is about one person and his problems, but the city is well managed, it's well run. The council is, seems to me to have done a good job in turning its back literally on, on, on Ford and defending the integrity of city government against this. So the this, this city has, I think, taken a lot of actions to kind of insulate itself from, from the scandal. And in that sense, I think, it's been, I think it's been good. And I don't think anybody who ser seriously thinks that a scandal that tarnishes one person tarnishes a city. I just don't think it works like that. And, and I think that's meant that, you know, the people of Toronto think, this is bad, but it's, this is not, not actually about us. It's about him, okay. would be my view of it. In your recent book, Fire and Ashes, you write, there's no profession more than politics that requires a person to know themselves. Mm -hmm. So this, reflect that into what you're seeing happen in this shift time in the scandal season here. Well, I think Joe's saying, you know, the scandal from his point of view is kind of made him realize what his job is, what he has to do. It's kind of centered him down. And I, I think that uh, um, it's also a scandal about a person who doesn't have the faintest idea who he is, who is just acting it out in public. And it's kind of embarrassing. I just want him to go away and get treatment. Um, so politics uh, lays people bare. Certainly laid me bare when I was in the middle of it. You come home at the end of a day and you think, wow, how am I going to get through tomorrow? You know, these things really stretch you. Uh, but let's not overdo it. 
there, there'll be people in this audience who've been through much more difficult things than any politician has been through, so let's not get into feel my pain, you know, because life can be difficult. And when life is difficult, you've got to meet the challenge. And you never know before a challenge whether you can meet it or not. The, the, you have to meet that challenge when it happens. Okay, so when scandal dominates, and thank you for putting that in perspective, because every life has got scandals, pains, whatever, but when it dominates in politics, what doesn't get done? What do we miss when our appetite is only for scandal? Michael? Well, I mean, we, we kind of forget, and you know, you see this on the international media, they're talking about Toronto in relation to this scandal. People forget that this is quite a well-run city. It's quite a decent city. Um, we get focused on a personality, and we don't focus on the job we have to do, which is to get the garbage out, get the trains to run on time, get the schools, thing, get our kids home from school, make sure the streets are safe. That's the guts and core of a city, and it gets lost in the discussion of a scandal. Okay, so Joe, so it'd be nice to get back to business. To, it, it, and Joe, it has sold enormous media business, <laughs> but what got lost in city hall business? Yes, well, let me say, as a preface to it, what I think politics is, it's praying with your feet. <laughs> so where do you put your feet is how you pray when you're doing politics. Um, what, is, what has been missing in all this time of scandal, what, what we haven't been talking about is the deep needs that we also have in our city. If you are a public transit user, we're not talking about the needs of public transit. We have a waiting list of 85,000 people in Toronto waiting for affordable housing. We're not talking about how to fund that, where we would build it, who our partners would be. We have children who go to school hungry in a city of such richness, we have not found a way to make sure every child is fed as they go into school and then they act out and then we have all kinds of behavioral issues uh, to deal with and so on. We, those are the issues that are not talked about when we're talking about a personal scandal. All right, okay. And we have a Toronto-based studio audience. Thank you both for those views on City Council. Joe, bless you as you go back to the big work of City Hall, and Michael's going to stay on the set for our next segment, but it's time to bring you home into the conversation. And here's our own squeaky clean, nothing to hide, Sheldon Neal. Oh, gosh. Uh, I can imagine the press scrum on my driveway tomorrow, Lorna. Um, here's our question for you at home. Is society's appetite for scandal a good thing or not? Some might argue that its scrutiny keeps public figures accountable. On the other hand, sensational headlines can distract from important issues and conversations. So please send your answers by phone, email, Facebook, or Twitter. And when we come back, Bill Blakey, a 29-year veteran of the House of Commons, joins Michael Ignatieff and me as we discuss scandal and what is the line separating healthy from unhealthy in exposing wrongdoing. Stay with us. <laughs> 